And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game called Sifaka. I think that's how you say it. In this game, you are a lemur and you're on Madagascar. And instead of dancing, you are apparently going to eat mangoes. And you're going to be doing so in programmable movement, where you are going to decide how far your lemur moves around the board. However, you're doing that by using the cards already on the board. This says the game has a unique mechanism that I haven't seen before. Let me show you. Four cards are placed out in the middle of the table like this and on each card you're going to put your guy. He's gonna, you can pretty much start them facing any direction that you want and facing in this game is pretty important. On a player's turn, or everyone's going to start with a card, and on a player's turn you're going to play your card. Now the first four cards have to be played onto these spots here. So nothing much is going to happen on the first turn as each player plays one card there. Sometimes when a card is played you're going to see a mango. Now there's three types of mangoes. There's green, yellow, and red. Red is the ripest mango. It's the best. And you'll place a token there of that type. Each token is worth a certain number of points. Greens are ones and twos, yellows are twos and threes, and reds are threes and four. Now, starting with the second card that you place determines how you move your creature. So let's say, for example, I place this card here. I cover up this spot. It shows two bushes. That means I'll move forward two. So let's say I'm the red monkey playing that one there. I would move forward two. One, two. If on a future turn, maybe I place one like this. Well, first of all, I couldn't do that because this puts a mango here, and you're not allowed to place on top of a mango. So let's say I put one over here on top of this. That's four, and facing that direction. So I can move four and then turn, or I can turn and then move four. So here I would turn and then move four, one, two, three, four, which is not very useful. I couldn't do this way because you, if you place down, you have to be able to move. There is an odd thing which I have not yet seen where there's nowhere that you can place that lets you take a legal move. But usually there's some way that you can play something. You could play something so that you're just turning in a certain direction. You can place, you go here, which is move five, and then go like that. Uh, you can place and cover up a whole lot of things. Your whole goal, though, is to end your turn on one of these mangoes, in which case you get that mango. When that happens, after you've moved there, then you'll keep going, and the game is going to go until all the cards are out. Now these cards simply just have different combinations of arrows and mangoes and bushes, and once they're all out, players will count up the number of mangoes that they have, and whoever has the most points wins. If there's a tie, whoever has the most red mangoes and yellow mangoes, etc. That's how you play. Now this game is actually more strategic than it might think because these cards are random that you draw, but as you place them out, the board is going to gradually get larger and you're going to have different spots to put these. Now, I realize that this type of game has that analysis paralysis problem where somebody can take a long time to figure out what they want to do. But in reality, it's not as difficult as you might think. First of all, there's only going to be a few mangles in the board at any time. There will never be that many because people will grab them up as soon as they can. So you figure out what mangoes am I trying to get. Then the next thing is, what direction do I need to turn to get those mangoes? So then you look for those arrows, and then around those arrows you can count the bushes and figure out, is one of them give me the right number of bushes I need to to get there? So yes, that still requires thinking, and there will be some people who will really slow this game down. But for the most part, I found it fascinating because as you put a card down, not only are you programming what your movement is, you're setting stuff up for someone else. You have to think about that. Like, yes, this is perfect. I just gave Billy Bob a chance to get a red mango, and I did all that so I could get a green one, which could be one point. His could be worth four. Now, that randomness is there. Uh, like three, four for reds, twos, threes for yellows, and ones, twos for greens. Greens really are not worth you know, as much as reds, not even close but they might be worth two, which makes them worthwhile, and every point counts as you're playing this. You want to get something every turn. You won't, and sometimes you look at the board, so what do you do then? Well, you can try to set yourself up, 
which is not going to happen as much as a four-player game. While a two-player game allows that back and forth, you can put cards out, setting yourself up for mangoes more. Um, but at the same time, you can try to stop someone else. Maybe you can see, oh, they're about to use this spot. I'll put my card there. I think the game plays best actually with two because it's more strategic. Although the four, playing with four kind of makes it a little bit of a lighter game. The game itself is not a big heavy game. It looks like it and it's deeper than you think as you place the cards on top of everything. But overall, I was pretty happy with it. I mean, the production quality is okay. The cards are square, which is nice. The artwork is functional. The lemurs and the pieces, you know, they're little small pieces, but it does come in a nice box here. Um, but I think as like a filler type game, a game that you play while you're waiting to play the bigger game, I think this one's going to attract a lot of people, especially some of the cool aspects of just how you place the card affects how you move. That is Sifaka. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. The door. Yeah.